Okay, the directional derivative of phi at point naught in the direction of u. Okay, what does that mean? We are given a three-dimensional space, x, y, and z. Okay, all this is done in three-dimensional space. Okay, and from here, x, y, and z, we have a certain point over here. Okay, as we have proven just now that, or as we have shown just now, this point over here, there's an associated result. Okay, associated result given by the scalar field of phi. So, the point over here, let's just say it is 1, 2, 4. Okay, we put the 1, 2, 4 inside here, we get another variable, okay? Another value, so to speak, another value over here. Now, this is in three-dimensional space, meaning to say that unlike two-dimensional calculus, okay? Two-dimensional calculus, where there's a void over here, okay? He can walk in this direction over here, or he can walk in this direction over here. And let's just say his value, his speed changes, for example, his speed changes, okay? His speed changes as he walks either in this direction or in this direction, which, if I'm not wrong, is dvds. So, his speed changes in terms or with respect to whether he's traveling that way or this way, okay? However, when we go to three-dimensional space, notice that unlike two-dimensional calculus where we can walk forward and we can walk backward, there is a three-dimensional space in which we can venture to. We can go, you know, 90 degrees south, 20 degrees south, 25 degrees west, okay? And in all those directions, okay, in all those directions that we travel from a single point, the rate of change of the scalar field or of the scalar value is also going to change at respective rates, okay? So, for example, if I travel from here to here in this direction in three-dimensional space, my rate of change may not be that high. Meaning to say, this value over here wouldn't increase as fast as supposed to if I were to travel in this direction, where this value will increase, will increase at a much faster rate. Relating it with 2D calculus, if I walk forward, let's just say my speed increases in only 1 meter per second. But if I walk in the other way, if I walk backwards, my speed increases by say 4 meters per second. Let's just say, okay? So, the directional derivative of phi at point zero measures the rates of change of phi starting from the point P0 or at P0 depending on which direction I travel. And that direction I'll travel is given by u over here. Okay? So, I hope we kind of kind of know what, what's going on over here. Okay? Okay. No, we got here. I'm just going to recap. Okay, this is a gradient vector field. We've got a scalar field over here in terms of phi. So, we put in values of x, y, and z, we get another value over here. That is fine. And then we can go from the scalar field to the vector field by using the, the del operator. Okay? The del operator over here. And that is simply del phi. This is pronounced as del phi. It is the partial, differenti partial differentiating phi in terms of x, y, and z, and for aligning it up with the i, j, and k components. This now becomes a vector field. So we're from scalar field to a vector field, but the physical interpretation of the vector field is not known yet. Okay? Doesn't matter. Okay, and then we also talk about the directional derivative of phi at point naught. So that means that I got a point in the three-dimensional space. I got the resultant value from the function from the scalar field of phi, and depending on which direction I travel, which direction of u, okay, which direction of u I travel, my rates of change of phi of the scalar field is gonna be different, okay, and that is what the directional derivative means. The rate of change of phi and point naught in the direction of u, okay, and I forgot to add that u needs to be. A unit vector, okay? Unit vector, i.e., i.e., magnitude of u equals to one. Okay? So this is what I would just say for now. I hope that you replay the video if you don't know what I'm talking about, or to really confirm what I'm trying to say. Okay? Now the next lesson we're gonna relate the directional the derivative in terms of the gradient of phi over here. Okay, and everything fits quite nicely because by doing so, we at least get an interpretation of what the gradient of phi is. Okay, and that's the next lesson. Thanks.